Hey guys, it's Cameroon and welcome back to another video. Season 4 has been out for a little over 3 weeks, honestly it's felt a little longer, but I thought it would be a good idea to just give my current thoughts on it just before the start of the Star Watch event. Now we'll probably get more information on Star Watch this Monday, just before this update, so expect another video then. Now I mentioned Star Watch, did you all know it's this upcoming Tuesday? Because I feel like I had to go all the way back to the roadmap image just to find out. Now why am I saying this? Well, I think Blizzard isn't doing a good job on the marketing side of things right now in Season 4. Like, what happened to getting players hyped a week before, you know? I feel like just dropping the information a day before is not the greatest way to generate hype, and also makes it feel like Overwatch 2 is just stale, because all we'll be getting in the meantime is just a director's take on potential or vague upcoming changes, or nothing is actually set in stone. They'll be like, oh, we have some more changes to Life Weaver, or we have a somber work in mind. They did it last Season 2, it's just that the information is kind of meh, because we don't have a date on when they're coming. It's kind of just useless if you think about it, because for all you know, we could be getting it in season 7, and it's like, that's three seasons away, that's like nine months. Anyways, this is just one of my gripes of the season. Blizzard just needs to start advertising and marketing their game better, and just give some time to generate hype, make the game feel more alive. Another not so great part of the season is still the fact that it has no real sense of progression. There are two things to progress in Overwatch 2. A battle pass that is not the greatest if you don't buy it, and even then, it's not that good even if you do get it. Remember, this is my opinion. If you like the battle pass, that's great. I still think it should give 500 coins in the pass, and then you can earn the other 500 through weeklies. That way you benefit the players that actually consistently play the game, and give some players some coins back on the pass. And the other progression, of course, is ranked. But what else is there to do? Grind for skins? You can't. Level up your account to get cool borders? You can't. Hero Mastery Challenges and Rewards, they don't exist yet. Basically, there is nothing really to do or achieve in this game still. And even with that early access stamp that they put on the game, that doesn't mean it should feel this empty. Especially when they had a bunch of the progression systems in the previous Overwatch game. Also, why didn't they bring back the Archives PvE mode? It's around that time of the year when it should be here. And what did they do? They put some of the Archive skins in the shop. And no PvE mode. Like, I would have loved to play Archives with some of the heroes that received changes for Overwatch 2. But anyways, I could do this all day talking about how this game still feels like there's nothing to do, but I need to move on. Now, let's talk about some of the good so far. Overwatch League... Oh, how I've missed you. Now, if you don't watch Overwatch League, all I need to say is that the League had a great opening weekend, and they're giving out tokens again. Not in their strange pro-am way, but the good old-fashioned five per hour. The streams feel good, they up the video quality for them, and for me, the League is just really fun to follow. I like the casters, the watchpoint desk, pickums, everything. So as you can tell, I really missed watching the Overwatch League. I do have one tiny issue, though, which is it feels too easy to know the outcome of a game right now. You see two teams and just kind of go, well... I know who wins. And then there's also the Dallas Field, which are the previous champions, and they just got dominated by Soul Inferno. Something I did not completely expect. I did predict Dallas would lose, just not that bad. And speaking of predictions, I know it's a little late, but here's my predictions on the screen right now if you need some input on the upcoming game still. Remember, I'm no visionary or can tell the future, so my predictions aren't guaranteed. Now, let's move on to the last thing I want to talk about, and that is map pools being gone. It's probably the best change for Season 4 so far. It's just great loading into a game and just getting any map, whether that be Route 66, King's Row, Busan, etc. Just knowing that you can play any map makes the game feel 10 times better. No sniper heavy map pools or just maps that you don't like all the time. The game does not need map pools, and when they do exist, the game gets extremely dry extremely quick. Now for seasons that release a hero, I have one tiny gripe for. Can they not tweak balance of existing heroes, unless they're reworks of course, until like two weeks after the hero's release? Like why nerf or change the meta that many would consider balance when you're literally adding something that could potentially shake up the meta already? Like Lifeweaver could have released extremely strong, and then impact or counter existing characters already, making those characters either feel stronger or weaker. Just some food for thought, because they nerfed Ryan and I'm still a little salty on that, when they could have just left him untouched, and saw how he played for at least two weeks of Season 4 before they nerfed him again. Anyways, Season so far is like a 7 out of 10, but if Star Watch sucks, this is really going to hurt the season, so let's hope it's a good game mode. Now let me know how you are all feeling about Season 4 in the comments below, and of course, if you like the video, consider leaving a like and subscribing. It means a lot to me. Plus, we're getting close to 700, that'd be cool to hit. But yeah, that's pretty much it.